Hey guys, Xander Luciano here from the Fusion Cam team, and today we're going to be looking at the basics of the new wrapping feature. The wrapping feature is a new tool option that allows 2D adaptive, 2D pocket, and 2D contouring operations to be wrapped around a cylindrical body as such. This allows simultaneous fourth axis toolpaths. A wrap toolpath would be useful on machines with a fourth or fifth axis rotary table, as I'm using in this example, as well as in mill turn operations when you have live tooling. Alright, let's get started guys. So the only thing that there is to note is if you're using a rotary table, you will want your WCS to be in line with your rotary axis unless you have tool center point control, which usually only higher end machines have. So if you do have a fourth axis rotary, just be sure that you're actually using your WCS in the center of your rotation. You can have your part offset from your rotation, but your, your WCS will need to be along that axis. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and start off with our first operation. We're going to get started with a 2D adaptive clearing operation. Under the geometry tab, we're going to go ahead and do wrap tool path, and the wrap cylinder is what we're going to look at first. Now, the wrap cylinder is what we're going to be projecting our tool path to. We'll get into a little bit more detail about that next, but for now, because we're going to be machined to the bottom of this surface, we're going to wrap to the bottom surface. For our pocketing selection, we're just going to choose the two chains here, and here. Under our heights, you'll now notice that the heights tab looks exactly like the turning tab, where all your heights are cylinders from your origin, basically. We're gonna leave those at default because the defaults are good. Under passes, we'll disable stock to leave for now. Well, we'll disable axial stock to leave. And under linking, we'll leave everything default. And we'll choose our eighth inch flat end mill. So now you can see we have our first wrapped operations. They are wrapped along that cylinder. And now let's go ahead and make a contour operation to finish off this pocket since we left stock to leave on that edge. So we'll do a derived 2D contour. And the derived operation is going to allow us to copy over any applicable settings. So if you notice, our face is already selected and we have the two same chains already selected from our previous operation. We'll verify that they're going in the correct direction and then hit OK. And now we have a wrap 2D operation to finish our wrapped 2D pocket. Now let's talk about the differences in choosing a wrapped surface. So creating another 2D contour operation, if we choose to wrap the cylinder on this exterior surface, yet choose this lower contour, you'll see that we get a toolpath that isn't technically correct. Looking at both of them, you can see one is slightly larger than the other. Using the larger exterior surface, causes the geometry to be wrapped too much, or too little I should say, and therefore skews the toolpath. Likewise, if I create a new derived 2D contour, and I change this surface to be, instead of this exterior surface, to this interior surface, we're now choosing a cylinder that is too small, we'll get a profile that is too narrow. So comparing all three, you can see we have three toolpaths, this one will be perfect, this one will be too large, and this one will be too small. So choosing the right wrap cylinder so that your geometry is wrapped to where it's actually going to end up is key. Because these geometries are just using the cylinder's radius or diameter to project itself. So you do need to be careful when selecting that or you will get slightly wrong toolpaths. Usually, the thing that I like to keep in mind is I will wrap it to the cylinder face that I'm machining to. So to show you exactly what I mean by that, we'll go ahead and delete the two incorrect toolpaths, and we'll create one more 2D contour operation. We're going to go ahead and now machine out this L-shaped pocket right here. So we want to wrap it to the interior cylinder because we want to go all the way into the inside. For our contour selections, we'll choose this surface, and you'll notice that we have the wrong contour selected. No worries, all we'll do is we'll click on it again to go into the chaining menu. We'll choose an open contour, and we'll start adding a few more selections to it to help guide it into what we want. You'll see as we add selections, it tries to make guesses, and you can see it's still not technically correct. We need to add a few more in, and there's our first contour chain. We'll add one more over on this side, starting from here. We'll see it's already chosen an open contour, so we'll just add a few more contours to help guide it, and we'll hit OK. So now we have a 2D contour that is an open chain with two chains. Now what if we wanted this chain to go all the way around the part? Well, I'll show you an issue you will run into if you don't do it correctly. First off, we're going to go ahead and create one chain again. 
choose a close contour this time. However, if we hit OK, you'll see we get an error. We should have gotten an error. We usually get an error. I somehow managed to not get an error that time. Wow, that's strange. Okay, uh, take two. <laughs> Delete that. All right, well, since I didn't get an error last time, we're gonna try and reproduce an error again to show you what I actually wanted to show you. So there we have our closed contour. We'll hit OK, and we'll get the error that says cannot unwrap cyclical geometry. And this issue occurs when you're trying to select geometry that goes past 360 degrees and over itself. Sounds kind of confusing, but no open pockets, no cyclical geometry that goes past 360 degrees. And to get around this, there is one little trick besides apparently doing what I did before. And what we'll do is we'll do a series of chains, creating the first contour chain over here. There's our first contour chain. Select our second contour chain. Hit OK to accept it, and we'll do a few more up here. Open contour, open contour. Now we need to ensure that all the arrows face the right direction. This one's going the right way, this one, but this one's opposite, so we'll flip it. And now it's forming a loop of four chains. Instead of choosing one chain, we have four chains. Leaving everything else as is, we'll hit OK. And you can see that the toolpath automatically combines itself at each chained connection. So even though this is a cyclical operation, it will allow you to do it if you do separate chains. Taking this one step further, if we wanted to do an adaptive clearing operation here, you wouldn't be able to because no open pockets are allowed. Just take my word for it. But to get around this, we're gonna create a new patch operation. Hide this base. We'll create a sketch on this surface. We'll do a circle, 1.125. And we're gonna do an extruded patch. We'll extrude the surface past where we need to be. We'll hit OK. Now what we're going to do is we're going to split that surface by including more geometry. So editing that sketch again, we will do include 3D geometry. We'll now click a couple contours that we need to split that face. So we're just going to include all these contours. And as soon as we're done, we'll hit stop sketch. We'll go ahead and hide that so we can look at just our sketch and our surface patch. Now what we will do is we'll split face We'll split this surface patch with this sketch. We have to do that twice. Split face, choose a sketch, hit OK. And we can actually delete this exterior profile now. And now we have patches to go inside of our model. So now if we hop back to the cam environment, see if we do regenerate or if we have an issue. Regenerate successfully. And now what we'll do is we'll do a new 2D adaptive clearing. Again, we're gonna wrap the toolpath around the interior cylinder. And we'll choose these two patches. Now using the surface patch actually allows us to select that patch contour. We'll hit okay. And as soon as it generates, you can see we have our first operation. Now you may want this to go past that. So there's actually another trick. We'll hop back over to the patch environment, do modify, extend, choose that as well as this contour line. We'll say we want it to go 0.25 because we're using an eighth inch tool and we really want to be overkill with it. Hop back over to the cam environment. Because we updated the model, we're going to need to regenerate it. And now it will automatically re-add that contour from that surface patch and extend past it. We can then go ahead and hide those contours or those surface patches. And now you can see that we have two wrap tool paths for that operation. We go ahead and move that before so that it's a roughing operation. We can now see we have the adaptive for that pocket, finishing it with the contour, adaptive clearing this open pocket, quote unquote, and then finishing it with another contour. You may want this area to be extended. You wanna do tangential fragment extension. We're doing an eighth inch tool, so we'll just do an extra eighth inch of extension. And all this does is it extends the leads out. Well, it extends the toolpath out. All right, lastly, all we have left to do is this spiral cylinder thing. And we're gonna do a 2D pocketing operation with that one. We'll again do wrap toolpath. We'll choose the face we're wrapping to. We'll choose our contour selection and we'll hit okay. 
And like that, our pocketing operation is complete. And now if I go ahead and simulate this entire toolpath, I hide our body, hop to the end, you can see that we have a fourth axis wrapped toolpath for this entire body. That's it. That's the basics of wrapped toolpaths. They're not too complicated. And if you have any questions, let me know. But overall, I think these are pretty simple. And there's a few more advanced features that I'll get into in another video. But I think this was complicated enough. Anyways, hope that helps and enjoy the new features, guys.